<laughs> uh, the deadline to making complaint for missile payment protection insurance, PPI, is da -da -da, a year away, yeah. Steph. Can you believe we're still talking how about this? We, how long have people had to claim PPI? It, it, it's a long time now. So it started being sold in 1990. Right. So, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, the mis-selling scandal has been going on for at least mm. a decade now. It, it, it's unbelievable, actually. And mm. for those of you who... I mean, I think you'd struggle to find somebody who has not had a PPI call, a letter, an email. Uh, you know, OK, there might be a few out there, but uh, most people have had those mm. calls, haven't mm -hmm, they? So mm -hmm. just to give you the background on this, as I say, it, it was from 1990 to 2010, you saw something like 64 million PPI policies that were yeah. sold. Um, and they were sold to customers who were taking out loans, mortgages, store cards, credit cards. The idea is being that it was a, essentially an insurance in case you got ill and were not able to make the payments or you were made redundant from work. The problem, however, was that it was viewed that some of these were missold to people, so it wasn't properly explained to people. In some cases, people didn't even realise they had it. Uh, and still don't, you know, yeah. that's why there's still mm. claims for it. And also people were missold it in the sense of they didn't need it or it wouldn't cover them for what they would have needed it for. So that was the problem with this and that's why it became a, a mis-selling scandal. So now nearly 20 million complaints have been made about PPI. Wow. And this, we're, we're talking a staggering amount of money here as well because on average people have got back around £2,000 each so, you know, that's a lot of money. I remember at the time, at the height of it, you know, we were even talking about it affecting um, our economy in terms of the growth and things because it gave people a bit of money in mm. their pockets to spend and we were looking at what impact it had actually on economic growth. It shows you how much the, the banks yeah. set aside yeah. to, to pay off those, yes. those claims. It, it's a mega amount of money. I mean, that is more than the Ministry of Defence's uh, budget for spending. So, oh, wow. you know, over £46 billion pounds, uh, yeah, set aside for this. But now there's a deadline for complaining about it. So it's a year from today, and then after that, the doors are closing. That There's no it. more chance of uh, getting a PPI claim back. Makes you realise, though, why so many firms have uh, give you those phone calls, because there's that much money laid aside, and there's, there's a cut available of that if you process a claim successfully. That's yeah. why it's been... There's so many PPI firms out there. And, and, and I've done, you know, banking results for such a long time, and we've seen how much it's... You know, the banks have taken a hit. £20 billion, pounds, Lloyd's, and then you've got others like RBS and Barclays, again, up in the billions that they've yeah. had to pay out for it. Um, Steph, you were giving a little bit of advice um, earlier to the whole breakfast team. Um, and Was as, I? Yeah, <laughs> yes, you were. You're probably not allowed to do that. But anyway, <laughs> but you were saying that, you know, there's probably not one of us sitting there who, who probably doesn't yeah, have it. You, so, yeah. so there are lots of places where you can go and try yes. and get and it the, back, Yes, and there's lots there? of places where you can claim it back for free for as free, well. Yeah. So, you know, there's lots of standard letters out there that have been written where yeah. you can, you know, put in your details and send them to your banks. I mean, there will be people who don't have it, yeah. but I think there are lots of people still who are unaware that they had it at all if they had store cards or yeah. mortgages from the past. But, yeah. Uh, you give me a job to do um, the rest of the day, so thank you very much for that. I shall go <laughs> we'll and... take you the rest of the day. I'll take you <laughs> ten minutes when you've finished it. OK, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I have been warned not to tempt pensioners out of final salary pension schemes by offering them lump sum cash payouts. The regulator's written to 14 firms and Steph's got the details. Yes, morning to you both. So, yeah, millions of people save up for a pension with their company. Mm -hmm. So, you know, lots of companies offer them and it gives you a guaranteed income and they're often called final salary pension schemes. So lots of people do this. But they're very costly for companies because, of course, they contribute to mm. the pots as well. And so what we've seen happening is companies offering their staff in this scheme, uh, in some of these schemes, the chance to be able to take the money out and put it in their own private pension pot. And so this can be very appealing to people because they're off, being offered hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, in a lump sum, which, you know, for some people, that's a, a, much better mm. than getting just this income every year. Uh, but the problem is the regulator is saying, hang on a minute, this could mean that they badly invest this money. So there's a danger that it opens people up to vulnerable, you know, vulnerable, it makes them vulnerable to bad advice in terms of what they do with their money. So they, as you say, have written to 14 companies to yeah. say, Hang on a minute, just think about this before you advise people to uh, leave the scheme and offer them these great sums of money, because that might not be the best thing for them. Very interesting. Thank you very much.
news, um, British Gas has been overcharging customers. It's paid back £2.7 million after an investigation by Ofgem, the regulator. I'm trying to read slowly because I know Steph has literally just got the press release. <laughs> so what more can you tell us? Yes, uh, morning to both. So more than 94,000 customers were overcharged for switching providers. Right. So this is all to do with people who wanted to change when it came to the end of their contract. So uh, Centrica, which owns British Gas, said this is because of a system error. But what the regulator has found, the Ofgem, is that customers were overcharged to the tune of £700,000. So first of all, that's been paid back to customers. But the other issue as well that they found from Ofgem's investigation into this is that when you come to the end of the contract, you, in the last 49 days, are essentially in a switching window when you can can leave British Gas and go to another provider without paying any exit fees. Now, what Ofgem have found is that British Gas wrongly informed 2.5 million customers that they would be charged an exit fee. So there will be lots who wouldn't have moved because of that. But also um, within that, some who did were then charged a fee for leaving when they shouldn't have been. So overall, what Ofgem are saying is British Gas failed their customers who were coming to the end of their fixed contracts and uh, unfairly penalised them applying charges in error. So because of that, British Gas is paying back money to people, but also paying paying compensation as well. And, uh, yeah, they've agreed to pay some money as well into Ofgem's Consumer Redress Fund, which is all about helping people who have been you know, badly treated. Really quickly, will company. you know that this has happened to you and how will you get your money back? I don't know that yet, okay, but uh, so. that it sh if it has happened to you, um, given they've already said they've paid out this money, right, I'm assuming you've got it back, okay. uh, but there might be more to come, so 